which escalation flaw hits Linux, you can now bypass DRM legally, and Triton malware is tied to the Russian government. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for October 30th, 2018. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Happy day before Halloween! Our Patreon is located at patreon.com slash threatwire and that is always the best way to support the show and will help us reach our next goal. So if you want access to exclusives, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below and special thanks to our newest Patreon supporters including Griff, David, Merlin, Emmanuel, Sony Magus, Lenny, Aloha, Shitaka Ganai, Andrew, and Brian. And now, on to the news. The Xorg server is a free and open source implementation of the display server for the X Windows system, and it's used to help manage graphic displays for lots of popular Linux distros, including OpenBSD. A bug in the Xorg server was recently found, and it would allow an attacker to gain root privileges with a privilege escalation flaw. It affects OpenBSD, but also Red Hat, Ubuntu, Debian, and CentOS. This flaw was 23 months old, and it allows files to be overwritten using the dash log file and dash module path parameters. And even lower privilege users could escalate their access by using this issue to their advantage. Xword posted a security advisory about the issue on October 25th, labeling the issue with CVE 2018-14665. It was originally discovered by Narendra Shinde. Now, according to the advisory, a GitHub commit to the Xorg server open source code first appeared in version 1.19.0, and it, quote, introduced a regression in the security checks performed for potentially dangerous options, enabling the vulnerabilities. It could be exploited if the Xorg server was configured to run as root. Now, according to Hacker Fantastic on Twitter, the zero date can also be triggered via an SSH session remotely on OpenBSD if the machine already has an account on it, which means that this could be taken advantage of even if the attacker does not have physical access. Other than OpenBSD, though, it seems that the other distros would require local access. Now, patches are available for most distros that are vulnerable via the links in the show notes, and Xorg server recommends removing the set UID bit for chmod755 in Xorg if no patch is available. As of October 28th, consumers can now legally bypass DRM protections to repair or maintain their tech devices. Yay! According to a new ruling by the U.S. Copyright Office, and as a part of the exemptions for the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or DMCA for short, owners and professional repair people can now bypass digital rights management protections for specific reasons like repairs, jailbreaking, unlocking your device from a carrier network, accessibility, or education. Devices under this exemption include smartphones, tablets, mobile hotspots, wearables, smart TVs, cars, tractors, y'all remember the John Deere debacle, and smart home appliances including your fridge, HVAC systems, and home management systems kind of like a Nest. IoT devices like Amazon Echoes or Google Homes are now also filed under this exemption. The U.S. Copyright Office also clarifies that this allows for repair or modification and diagnosis to allow a device to function, not to bypass any subscription service or add-on. The device must be lawfully acquired as well. A notable and important part of this change has to do with security researchers. Now, an InfoSec professional is exempt whenever they are modifying a computer program or device, as long as they are acting in good faith and not breaking the CFAA, which is the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Now, this is really cool, but keep in mind, the U.S. Copyright Office does not exempt manufacturing or supplying of tools that can be used to break copyright protections. That's still illegal. This also doesn't make DRM illegal. Manufacturers of devices can still put locks in place, and they can continue to make those locks harder to bypass. And as such, while this is a huge win for right-to-repair advocates on a federal level, it's still a work in progress to get legislation passed at a state level Level, requiring manufacturers to make circumvention possible. Now, being able to repair or modify your own device for upkeep or to keep it working for a long period of time will not only save consumers money, but will also, I think, lead to a better understanding of how technology works. 
According to a report by FireEye Intelligence, a large and dangerous attack on a Middle Eastern infrastructure facility was likely caused and developed by a Russian government-backed research institute. In the post, FireEye discloses what they believe to be ties between the Triton malware, which they first wrote about way back in December of last year, and the Central Scientific Research Institute of Chemistry and Mechanics, which is a Russian government-owned lab in Moscow. Triton, also known as Trisis, would cause real physical damage to ICS or industrial control systems, like gas refineries or chemical plants. It would tamper with the safety system, which would alert or shut down parts of the ICS if dangerous conditions occurred. Now, if this malware was successful, it could make the system ignore proper protocols and in turn put the plant and its workers in danger. The Middle Eastern plant was never actually named in the 2017 attack, but CyberScoop stated that it was an oil and gas plant located in Saudi Arabia. Now, FireEye linked Triton to a hacking group called Temp Velis and to the Russian lab using several different pieces of data. An IP address belonging to the lab, malware tested inside the institute, artifacts left in the malware, and the malware devs operating hours. A string of data inside the malware was tied to a Russia-based person's username or handle, and that same individual was also a professor at the institute. The IP was used to track open source coverage of Triton, but also to engage in network recon against the targets of interest. The testing environment Temp Veles was using tied the group to the hack and to Triton. And lastly, they also noticed many different files have Cyrillic names and artifacts, which could be tied to a Slavic or Russian language. FireEye also made note that while they found this evidence that ties the malware and the attack framework to a hacking group and the institute, they do not know without pause that the institute developed the tool. They do believe that the research institute has the capacity, the knowledge, and the expertise to develop and prototype Triton, though. News for patrons! Patrons now have exclusive access to a security headline bulletin by my friend Tom Merritt of Daily Tech News Show. It's going to be an audio file which is uploaded to the Patreon feed, so if you use the Patreon RSS, you will see it show up once a week along with my regular episode. So this way you get more content since I can only cover a few stories each week. So make sure to check out Tom's show, it's called Daily Tech News Show, where I guest host now and then, and consider supporting his team's work at patreon.com slash DTNS. And big shout out to Costi, Justin, and David for supporting those shows. And patrons, make sure to share your favorite stories in the community tab or on Discord. Every single Friday, I will pick three or more top stories for a voting poll that patrons can vote on to be included in next week's show. Patrons also get access to a downloadable audio version of the show, first looks at show topics, polls, discussions just for patrons, behind the scene photos of like all of my fur babies, and a Discord server just for patrons at $2 per month and up. So join now to get access to all of these and help support the show. Our next milestone goal gets you access to a live video Q&A and we are so close, just for patrons at all levels. And it gets us closer to doing a second episode each and every week. And also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, keep them coming. Hit that subscribe button, mash that subscribe button, share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. We want everyone to watch this show. And with that, I am Shanna Morse and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.